It's been a great start to the season so far for Lafayette men's soccer, but now the true test begins. It's the Patriot League opener, and the Leopards set to host the Boston University Terriers here today on the Lafayette Sports Network, presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Oak Stadium here in Easton, Pennsylvania, as it's match day number one for the Patriot League men's soccer season. I'm Adam Dobrovolsky. Thank you so much for tuning in as the Leopards 4-1-1 one one on the season set the host Boston, who is 0-5-1 on this 2019 campaign. And the biggest change so far this season for the Leopards is their offense. Through six games, they have scored 13 goals. This includes three games with at least three goals scored, a four spot in the season opener against Siena, five goals against Monmouth, and then three more their last time out against LaSalle. This was a job well done by the Leopards offense to bounce back after their lone loss of the season, which is a 3-0 defeat at Temple. So two games in Philadelphia, Lafayette back home, and really just a well-versed offense with multiple options. They can attack you from the wing. They can attack you up front, inside the box, multiple ways to go. Meanwhile, for Boston, well, it took them a while to get their first goal of the season. In fact, in their first four games, they were all shut out, and those games outscored 6 to nothing. But they've had a goal in each of their last two games. They got a draw their last time out against Brown. And last year, they struggled a bit early in the season, but still found a way to get hot. And Patriot League play got four wins and got themselves into the first round of the Patriot League tournament. They're going to try to make it six years in a row with a PLT berth. We'll step off to a quick break. When we come back, we'll get the starters for these two teams. Stay tuned on the Lafayette Sports Network. Welcome back here on the Lafayette Sports Network as we take a look at the starting lineup for these two sides. First, for visiting Boston. Under head coach Neil Roberts, he's been at the helm for 35 seasons, and he's joined by associate head coach Scott Black and assistant coach Francis Ocaro. In goal today, you'll have the Amherst transfer in the junior Michael Stone so far this season. A 1.57 goals allowed average and a 76.3 save percentage. The back line led by Elias Lampus, the junior from Belgium. Midfield will be led by some experience from the seniors, Mana Chevalli and Satchel Corte. And up front, the impact play for Boston, they play with both tallies so far this season. Matt McDonald. McDonald, a senior, he's had a successful career with Boston. Last year had six goals in just five games, but had a season-ending injury cut short what could have been an all-Patriot League and maybe even an all-region campaign. This season, McDonald, obviously both goals, but he has accounted for 26 of the team's 76 shots and 12 of the team's 20 shots on goal. In fact, this season, Boston has more corner kicks, 27, than shots on goal, 20. So McDonald obviously will be a key factor for the Terriers. Meanwhile, for Lafayette, the Leopards, led by head coach Dennis Bond, his 19th season at the helm. He is joined by assistant coaches Jorge Chapoy, Gabriel Mar Robinson, and David Cartwright. And for the Leopards, in goal, Alex Sutton. He's been fantastic so far this season. Uh, but we look things up top first with these Leopards. And up front, obviously, you have James Gibson and Marcus Kilimitridis doing a great job. Martin Sisanga working on the wing with our impact player who we'll be talking about momentarily. But up the middle, you have Giannis Panayidis and Nick Hazel. And then the back line, good to see Adam Bramson back in the lineup. He'll be working center back with Christian Williamson. The outside backs, Andrew Venezia and Will Echeverria. But now as we get to the keeper, Alex Sutton. Sutton this season, he has a sub one goals allowed average and an 84.8 save percentage so far this season. A big reason why the Leopards are 4-1-1 one and, one, and Sutton has four clean sheets this season. Our impact player, Ryan Gonsalves, he is coming off his first career brace earlier this week at LaSalle. Had just two shots, but two tallies to get him to three on the season. But he's also had a good experience facilitating the offense. He led the team last year with five assists as a junior, had a pair more as a sophomore, and in his career, five goals or five goals and seven assists. Gonsalves will be a player working on the right wing today, helping to facilitate and maybe even finish things in this Lafayette attack. These teams getting ready for action in the Patriot League opener. Lafayette in the home primary black with the secondary white today. And Boston in the visiting white with the secondary red. All-time series in favor of Boston. Four wins 
One loss, one draw. That draw came last year, a scoreless result in Boston. We'll see what happens here today, but for Lafayette, much improved offensively this year compared to last year. 12 goals in 17 games in 2018, but 13 goals this season for the Leopards. Can solve this our impact player with three goals on nine shots, but the leading scorer actually, Sebastian Varela, four goals. He's been the shark so far this season for the Leopards. His four goals all coming and the three plus goal efforts for Lafayette and he's had the last goal or last two goals in each of those three games and in fact the three games with at least three goals scored is a program best since 2010 and he had to go all the way back to the previous six seasons for the previous three games with at least three tallies so much improved in terms of the offense this season for the Leopards but this Boston team they have made the Patriot League tournament five consecutive seasons they were the four seed last year went four four and one in league play that despite being one six and two in non-league play before making it to the Patriot League tournament so they have shown before they can turn it up right around this time of the season they'll try to get it done again and they hope that their offense will try to match out the offense of the Leopards a beautiful day here in eastern Pennsylvania. It's a whiteout day at Oak Stadium, although the Leopards wearing black. And that is because it's alumni day here. And in fact, Lafayette men's soccer, they'll be having a halftime celebration in honor of the 1998 uh, and 1999 Patriot League Championship men's soccer teams. And then down in the backdrop at Metzger Fields over... At Rappel Field, they will be later on celebrating the 1999 Field Hockey Championship team. So an exciting day here in eastern Pennsylvania. Beautiful temperature with sunny skies today. 77 degrees at the top of the hour as we're getting ready to get underway. Boston will have the opening touch. They'll be defending the right side in this opening half. And the whistle allows us to get underway, and we thank you so much for tuning in today here on the Lafayette Sports Network with immediately Marcos Kichamilidis, the sophomore transfer from Cyprus, winning the ball for the Leopards. Lofted up ahead, Kichamilidis settles it with the chest, looks to roll it back. Instead now actually will switch fields on the cross, and that's... James Gibson falling down after the header. It's out of bounds. Boston will have the throw in. Keetra Milidis, a transfer from Presbyterian College with the Blue Hose last year, had seven goals, two goals so far this season. He'll be a key factor up top along with Gibson. Headers exchanged, and Nick Hazel gets crumpled over by the attempt of Kerry Peterson, sophomore from Iceland. It leads to a foul, and in the first minute, a free kick with Alex Sutton lining it forward. Sasanga wins it for Lafayette. And now the Leopards will try to build. A lefty rolled pass by Venezia. Quick 1-2. Leads to a turnover. That was Kichamilidis and Sasanga trying to work it along the left wing. Adam Brampson with the back pass. Brampson moving to center back. Nick Hazel began the season there with Brampson injured. Hazel now moves up to the holding center mid spot. And Giannis Panayidis, the freshman from Cyprus, moving from the holding spot to the more attack minded set, or mindset, I should say, at center midfield. Alex Sutton, the sophomore from New York City, blasts it forward past midfield. A little flick by Sasenga into the box. Keetra Mildes tries to get a foot on it. And we'll see if it's a goal kick or a corner. And the officials indicate a corner late in the second minute, heading into the early third minute of this game. The Leopards with just one loss this season. That was 3-0 at Temple. One draw that was down a player, scoreless. At St. Francis, they've been 3-0 so far at home this season. Corner into the box. Trickles around. Finally cleared away by Boston. A header back forward by Venezia, and that'll be picked up by Michael Stone. Stone in his first season with the Terriers, previously with Amherst. And right out of the gate, 10 saves. And his debut against New Hampshire it helped him to earn a Patriot League Goalkeeper of the Week honors 
for the opening week of play. Had 15 saves in two games. Has played most of the time, but only had the first 45 minutes at Brown last time out. So we'll see if Neil Roberts goes with a tandem in goal today. Back and forth on the strikes. Williams, the captain, sends it back forward past midfield. But Boston, with the next few headers, that goes out of bounds. Yeah, for Boston, it's going to be about turning up the offensive efficiency. Just 20 of 76 shots have been placed on target over the first six games. And more than half of them coming from one player and the striker McDonald. Out of bounds on the cross attempt by Miles DeCaco, and that will lead to a throw-in for Lafayette. A whistle before the throw-in by Venezia, so we'll have to try that again. These sides did not compete against each other until Boston's first year in the Patriot League back in 2013. Lafayette won that first meeting 2-0. Boston finished tied for seventh in the league that season, and they have been unbeaten in the last five, making the Patriot League tournament in all five of those seasons. Last meeting here in Easton was a 2-0 victory, and Matt McDonald had a goal he did not play in last year's game due to injury, although Boston outshot Lafayette 18-8. Chance now to get going. James Gibson past midfield, still has some space, works it up the middle, rolls it forward, and that's behind Sasenga as that run never got timed fully in sync. And as a result, Boston will look to clear it out of trouble. And it's been a good start to the season for the Lafayette attack in terms of working as a unit. On the 13 goals, there's been 12 assists. 13 different players have at least a point through six games. And only two players with at least 150 minutes logged are without a point, and they were both players over the first five or six games working exclusively on the back line, Nick Hazel and Will Echeverria. Panayidis tries to win it for Lafayette. Pushed forward now for Boston. Actually, they're going to work it back a little bit. Shavali trying to stretch it out wide. Zion Balligson rolls it into the middle third. We play on as a karate kick by Sasenga sends it forward past midfield. Kichamilidis draws the throw in. Marcos Kichamilidis, a Big South second teamer last season. Scored a goal in his debut against Siena. Added in an equalizer in a scramble in front of the goal line against Monmouth. And what was eventually a come-from-behind 5-2 win in Lafayette's last home game. Lofted just a little bit too far above the head of Gibson. Gibson will give chase and force the clear. Actually, it stays in bounds. Echeverria locates it with the head. And Hazel... Trying to fight through two players. Has to dump it off. Sutton. Won't get it out of trouble. He's got such a great foot behind him, Alex Sutton. A personable player. Charisma. He really commands his presence. Helps out the back line. Been great so far in his sophomore season with the Leopards. Echeverria wins it on ahead. And a little bit of a muscle off the ball. Boston quickly turns it back, muscled again away. This time Peterson wins it for sure for Boston after DeCaco unsuccessful on the first try. Favorable bounce here for Lafayette on the clear attempt by Venezia. Bounces back to Sutton, and the Leopards will clear it out of the area. Eighth minute of action, no score. Boston still looking for its first win of the season. They have two goals this season. Did not score in their first 437 minutes and 10 seconds of the 2019 season. They had an equalizer against Massachusetts. Lowell looked like they were going to have a draw, but the Riverhawks scored in the final seconds of that game. 
Boston finally got their first result last time out against the Bears from Brown. No long throw for Echeverria. And Echeverria, the sophomore, he has a lot of muscle behind his throws. Header flicked in and a volley gets denied by an offside. Giannis Panayidis was a player, a player waiting to strike and Panayidis scored a goal in his debut against Siena. That was the team's first goal of the season. No shots yet, but Lafayette having a little bit more of the threatening opportunities early on. Off the boot by Stone. A little bit of passive play by Boston nearly led to a turnover, and now the Leopards push it up ahead. Panayidis can't keep it in. Throw in for Boston. So as mentioned, today match day number one for these two sides, and the Leopards and Terriers, not the only teams getting things underway, but they are the earliest to 1 p.m. start times. Army West Point at Loyola, the preseason favorites. Holy Cross at Navy. Navy having a good non-conference stretch in 2019. Lehigh at American and the Mountain Hawks, some big wins over Northwestern and Seton Hall. That's at two. And then the defending champions, Colgate, who now are all by themselves, number one in terms of Patriot League tournament wins with eight. They host Bucknell at four. Lafayette hoping they'll get their eighth championship this season and join the Raiders top among the ten in the league. Back and forth here between the keepers. Stone, lefty boot. He was getting some jeers from the fans from the Lafayette side reading out the season stats. It's one way to go at it. Get a little bit of gamesmanship in terms of the trash talk as this is sent into the box to Keiko's cross. Gets popped up, and that'll be grabbed by Alex Sutton. Sutton will oh, clear it forward past midfield. On a hop, maybe a chance for Keetra Mildes. He gets ahead on it. Gibson stretching it out with the wing. Cuts it back. Trying to set up that right foot instead. Dumps it off with the left. Gets it back from Echeverria. Good hard cut. Gets slid from behind. And the flag goes up. Oh, that very nearly could have been a card. As we look at the replay here, that was a bit leaving the feet by Satchel Corte. That could have been an awfully dangerous one in terms of caution, but it's still a dangerous spot in terms of the set piece. And Andrew Venezia, whose lefty foot has been huge, four starts, two assists this season. And Venezia... We'll have a chance here to put Lafayette ahead in the 12th minute. Venezia, both hands up, slices it towards the keeper. Stone punches it away in traffic. Shavali helps to clear it towards midfield. Hazel will stretch it back out. Martin Sisenga cuts back, sends it into the box on a hop, headed away by Boston. And the Terriers hold that first true dangerous opportunity. Good work by Sasanga, who gets called for a foul. That looked pretty clean. But what he at least does there is slow down Boston on the counter opportunity as Mana Shavali draws the foul. Look at the play here again. It might have been actually our view being obstructed. Hand maybe from behind where the official saw and we couldn't. And Shavali. Perhaps sensing that contact, knew to head to the pitch and get his team a set-piece opportunity, which goes too far. Nearest player 
was the junior from London, Zion Balligan. So goal kick coming up. A little bit more than 12 minutes complete. Still no shot in the game. Chance here maybe for Boston to build it up. Spread out to the wing. Cut back near the box. A chance for against Soleil. Soleil dumps it off. Corte lofted it too far outside the 18. Now to the far wing. Second opportunity. A header won by Brampson. A crucial one there. Gibson helps out working from his forward roll. And as Boston sends it back on a hop, it's picked up by Alex Sutton. Well, perhaps you hear the music in the background. They're going to start to get the warm-up process going over at Rappelt Field for field hockey action today. Again, a busy Saturday at the Metzger Fields Complex. I know baseball, they're going to have a fall exhibition coming up as well so a very busy day all around throw in here for the Leopards good work to win it with the chest by Kichamilidis Kichamilidis tried to find Sasenga and that was parried off a chest of a terrier that was Elias Lampus with a job well done these two sides still trying to figure each other out. Almost a quarter hour in, no shots so far. Another header won by Keecham Illidus, who's had good wherewithal around his body to know how to win the ball. Hazel gets called for a foul over the back. And the official will talk things over with Hazel, who was protesting that call rather loudly. We look at the call here. It looked like he timed that first, and that ball wasn't really played by Boston, so that was certainly a questionable call and a tough one there for the head official to have to decide one way or the other. But yeah, the field hockey game coming up later, and the backdrop, Lafayette set to host Holy Cross and their Patriot League opener. Good win by Panayidis. Sasenga races ahead. Looks to find Kichimilidis at midfield. Slowed down a bit by Griffin Roach, the freshman defender. And BU actually wins the throw in. Good work by Roach, freshman from Canton, Massachusetts. Roach with five starts. Each of the last five, in fact. Make it six if you include today. Sasanga from the wing. Gets space with the right foot, rolls it in at the edge of the box. Here comes the shot, our first of the game, and that goes high. That was the best opportunity in terms of space to shoot so far, but not really a threatening strike by Kichamilidis. Lean back that body too much because you had a defender closing in from Boston. Michael Stone with the lefty boot. Skies that one high. Glanced off the head of Gibson, but pushed back forward by the Keiko and the Terriers, who quickly turn it over. Gonsalves races forward. Slowed up by two players, and we have a foul coming up. The Keiko and Soleil both were kind of doing what they can with the hands, and more the Keiko, the culprit, than Soleil. So a uh, free kick opportunity coming up, and Venezia again will take it. Venezia missed two games, and he got a red card against St. Francis Brooklyn sent up, and that'll be right to Stone. The Innocents come back after 
the suspension and first game back against LaSalle got an assist and if you look at the four games he's played so far for the Leopards this season they have yet to concede a goal in those four games that well over 300 minutes and counting Lafayette going to switch fields here Gibson can't get through Soleil a uh, trip afterwards as Soleil was trying to go the other way. And the sophomore from Brookfield, Connecticut, he's been doing a good job defensively so far. Earns himself a free kick for his team. Against Soleil. Making his fourth start, has played in all seven games with the Terriers this season. Three shots, one on goal. Had his most offense against Brown with a pair of shots, but nothing doing off the free kick. And Sutton will look to send it forward on the boot. Good leg behind this one. Boston header goes backwards. Gibson wins it. Gonsalves trying to get around his defender. Still battling here. A nice turn by Corte. Corte with a little trip afterwards. Some extracurricular activities. And we'll have a caution coming up. Gonsalves and Corte both get a card. And you see the physicality here and Maybe Gonsalves with the stab and then the attempt of the kick afterwards. Corte, very lucky he didn't get sent off. Very lucky. You don't want to try that extracurricular swipe at an opponent. That's how you put your team at a disadvantage. Lafayette's last home game against Mamet, they went up 3-2. And a freshman from the Hawks. Made a similar play, got sent off Lafayette. Got two goals from Sebastian Varela to put it away. But definitely both card-worthy scenarios from each player. So again, Satchel Corte and Ryan Gonsalves getting cautioned. And now another whistle, I think, here is. Not sure exactly what's precipitating the stoppage here with the clock reading 25-42 left to go in the first half now. Finally, we'll try again on this free kick. Echeverria's header goes wide out of bounds. So now a throw in for Boston. Second one coming up. Adam Bramson fielded that out of bounds. The senior from Dover, Massachusetts. And the freshman from San Diego, Miles DeCaco. Maybe an opportunity here for the long throw. Sutton reads it quickly, punches it away. You know he is used to seeing that in practice with Echeverria the other way. Lampus at the far wing, rolls a pass. Carrie Peterson sends it into the box, denied by Lafayette. Next wave, chipped ahead. And no run was made there by Boston, mistimed. And Alex Sutton, keeping it in the box, will pick it up. More than 20 minutes complete, no score. The lone shot so far, Marcos Kichamilidis with a shot off the mark just at the edge of the 18, left side. Handball by Mark, by, uh, excuse me, Giannis Panayidis. Sets up a free kick for Boston. Florian Reeder, sophomore from Munich, Germany, sends it ahead. 
This Boston side, well-versed in terms of their international products. 12 players from outside the states represented from nine different countries. Settled at the edge of the box, stretched out. That's defended well. And the Leopards looking to head the other way. Dangerous pass in the middle of third that's turned over. Boston has yet to find their leading striker, Matt McDonald. But maybe a chance here as Corte races ahead, but he's unable to handle the pass. Near wing. Senior from Pennington, New Jersey, who was a strong player his times at Pennington Prep. Was in fact named the Trenton Times Player of the Year during his high school career. Throw in here though for Will Echeverria and the Leopards. Corte wins it with the head. McDonald trying to win it, guarded by Adam Brampson, and that's out of bounds. Leopards now with a throw in. Good work by Bramson just to legally kind of push McDonald out of space and out of bounds. That's sent ahead by Gibson. Sasenga wins it on a turn. Venezia lofts it into the box. It goes to Gibson who strikes and it slices wide. Tough angle to shoot, and Gibson just tried to settle on a hop and fire. That makes the accuracy a bit tougher, but our second shot of the game. And really a good job closing in defensively by Reeder, wearing number two today. If there wasn't that crash in defensively, there would have been time maybe for... Gibson to settle a little bit more and shoot. So it remains scoreless. And there'll be a throw in coming up for the Terriers here. Keiko will take the throw in and perhaps opting for the long option here. Gets the running start. Sends it into the box. Bramson with the head. Pops straight up. A little bit of trouble for the Leopards. But eventually Echeverria solves the issue. And it's out towards midfield. Keitra Milidis trying to block that clear. Nearly did. But Boston up ahead. Shivali, pressure from behind by Gibson, gets the pass off. Horizontally building things, Corte keeps it in, looking for space. A nifty turn, but a grab of the jersey as Soleil. And that will be a free kick coming up for the Terriers. Well, Echeverria took a stab, knew he was going to get beat. Made a tug of the jersey. So there you see the frustration. He had his eyes lighting up, hoping for a cross and a lead, but still will have an opportunity here. Lines it, and that's right at Gonsalves, who rolls it away. Sasanga puts the pressure on Shivali. Shivali with the turn in the pass. Soleil runs up to it, gets the cross, and that one equally as poor. Goal kick coming up. Well, sometimes that's why even if you get the foul, don't let the frustrations get the best of you. Soleil had two opportunities to cash in after the foul, and neither one was within the range of a Terrier. Opportunities at a minimum so far. Just two shots, both by Lafayette. Neither shot on target. More than 25 minutes complete. It's been a defensive-minded battle early. And knowing the Leopards, what they're capable of this season, they can turn on the Jets, one would think, at any time. But the way previous meetings have gone, it's been more like this. Scrap it out. 
teams well versed against each other being Patriot League opponents every year it's going to all come down to the quality of strikes in this one Echeverria will have the throw in and he's looking for someone he's going to muscle it as far as he can towards Gibson who gets ahead on it but to a waiting Terrier and that's dumped off to Stone Stone actually played his summer ball at Boca Raton FC as he's done in recent years helping him to make the transition to Division I soccer. Sasanga's boot gets blocked. Williams wins the ball. No foul called. Lofted up ahead. Gibson at the near wing settles. Corte and Gibson battle. Gibson wins it. Chance to cross here, sends it in far side. A header by Boston. Hazel trying to locate it for the Leopards. We'll dump it off. Echeverria to Gonsalves towards the end line, and he's not able to get there. Muscled away by Reeder, and a goal kick coming up. Strong job so far by the back line of Boston. He had Corte listed as a midfielder, but he's pretty much been the left back throughout. And although Gibson wins it here, that's a job well done by Griffin Roach, helped out by Elias Lampus and Florian Reeder on the back line today. And their Reeder allows nothing for Gonsalves. Still have yet to see a substitution for either team. Opportunity coming up, maybe at the next whistle for both sides. As you see, one from each side represented. Toti Knutson for Boston and Sebastian Varela for Lafayette will be heading on the pitch at the next throw-in or goal kick opportunity. Sutton outside the 18. Now he has striking experience at the high school level. He played as a keeper at the club level. So he's able to comfortably come out the box and now a throw in coming up in the offensive half for the Leopards. Yeah, Sutton played his club ball with Manhattan SC, a club that had two national championships. So Sebastian Varela comes on, he heads on for Giannis Panayidis. Meanwhile, Toti Knutsen, the junior from Iceland, comes on for Zion Balgan. Venezia will have the throw in for Lafayette. Good traffic caused by Boston, but Lafayette still sends it up ahead. Gonsalves. He forces the throw in, and now a chance for Will Echeverria, the right back, to head to the left side and get the long throw in. Echeverria earned himself a spot in the starting lineup late as a freshman last year. Made six starts, maxed out with four shots at American. He has started every game so far this season. Had both of his shots in the, in the uh, third game at St. Francis in the full 110 minutes. Off ahead, it goes right to Stone. Didn't see who got the touch on it, but a half hour through, still no score. And we'll look at the replay here. Maybe Gibson looked like there's a little bit more direction off a Terrier. But either way, it remains scoreless in Stone with his first denial. Throwing coming up, and it'll be for Lafayette. And there'll be another substitution coming up. Dylan Royalty will come in for James Gibson. Gibson, an effort and pace player up top. Royalty a little bit more effective on the wing. Both of them 
seniors on this Lafayette side. Chance here for the Leopards. Building up, Gonsalves with the pass. Royalty, can he get there in time? No. Goal kick coming up. Still a quiet opening half here with these sides tactically trying to penetrate the other. Lafayette wins this season coming against Siena, Fairleigh Dickinson, Monmouth, and LaSalle. Fairleigh Dickinson off to the best mark of the four. They're 4-2 four this season. Earlier this week gave NJIT its first loss of the season. Also had a nice win against, I believe, UConn earlier this year. Sent ahead, a little bit of hesitation for Sutton, who will come out of the box and send this one into the stands for a Boston throw-in. That was kind of in that no-man's land between Adam Bramson and Alex Sutton. So the Keiko will have an opportunity for the long throw-in. Freshman from San Diego who... Had his high school time in China with the Shanghai American School. No help on the throw-in. And right to Sutton. Both teams trying to utilize the long throw-in. When you have, really, teams practicing that, it's not just what benefits your offense, but your defense, obviously. Because you know how to defend it. Christian Williams... Rolls it towards the corner. Sisenga cuts back. Lost it into the box towards Royalty. Headed away by Corte. And it's a corner kick for Lafayette. First we'll have a pair of substitutions. That's a good cross by Martin Sisenga. Wearing that number 10 jersey, you know that he's a playmaker. He has worked well on the left wing. Not just this game, but this season. Chris Gomez comes in for him. And also Hale Lombard, the freshman, who had a goal and assist in his debut, comes in for Marcos Kitramilidis. It'll be Andrew Venezia with the corner. Towards the far post, Bramson with the header! Gets it through! And Lafayette has the lead with 11-10 left to go. The senior in just his third game this season. He gets a water bath from some of the Leopard alums here today. Well, I see number 21, recent captain Chris Moyes, who played with Bramson, part of that shower from the fans. And what a beauty. Perfectly timed and to the left post for Adam Bramson. Got to that spot untouched. Third assist of the season for Venezia. Bramson, as you see, his first goal of the year. Third of his career, Adam Bramson, who before now working as a center back, was a holding center midfielder. Patriot League honor roll member last year. Had a game-winning tally as a freshman against LaSalle. Equalizer in a draw last year against American for his first two career goals. Has logged nearly 3,500 minutes in his Lafayette career. Big goal there to give Lafayette the first half lead. The Leopards have trailed only twice this season. It was a pair of times, actually I guess you could say three times, a pair of times against Monmouth. They had the final four goals against the Hawks last time out here at Oak Stadium. And then obviously the 3 nothing loss against Temple. No chance to have a lead if you don't score. And it was a good job by the Owls in that game to dictate play. Gonsalves unable to poke it away. And there a tackle leads to a foul. Carrie Peterson. 
have that taken away, and the official thought that was unnecessary contact. We'll look at the replay here. Sebastian Varell on the call. Tough one to see there. Could have went either way. From our vantage point, we're not within steps there. So we'll leave that one to the officials. On the free kick, lofted ahead, and Sutton almost nonchalantly picks that one up. Almost like a receiver warming up for an NFL game. It's not Sunday yet. And that's been the big problem right now for Boston. They've been able to get some set pieces. They just haven't been able to connect. And those opportunities are so big. Lafayette getting the lead on a set piece. The corner from Venezia to Bramson. And if you know how Dennis Bond likes to work his team in perfect time to get a look at him, he talks so much about the importance of set pieces Venezia, that lefty foot, has been a huge asset, and now his junior season, the Christian Brothers Academy product, Boston's going to have to find that to respond. Royalty keeps the pressure on. Same from Lombard. Lombard, a freshman, 6 feet 4 inches from Bel Air Bluffs, Florida. Provides a presence up top as a target. Gomez got denied a little extension of the arm from Boston. No foul. We play on. Lampus this time sends it up top. Christian Williams will get a turn and clear it off a terrier. It stays in on the far sideline and Venezia. Touches it out of bounds. Throw in for Boston, but first a throw in. Boston substitution number nine, Jacopo Ambrosetti in for number 11. The Italian and the freshman, Jacopo Ambrosetti, heads on. And we'll see what Ambrosetti brings to the attacking unit. Off the throw in, a header by Hazel. Support by Corte and Shavali. Royalty tries for the swipe, and he shanked it. Thrown coming up for Boston. Jacopo Ambrosetti from Varese, Italy, but played his high school ball in Connecticut at the Woodstock Academy. Joined by his fellow freshman, Cole Hackett. Boston still yet to log a shot and what is now the 39th minute, Ambrosetti tries to keep it in. Brampson wins the ball, polite touch. Venezia didn't get there in time, back to Boston. Ambrosetti with the feed, now the cross, the header gets deflected, Sutton diving for it, picks it up. He beats Peterson to the spot. And the sophomore keeper denies a sophomore attacker. Both Carey Peterson and Toti Knutsen from Garda Bayer, Iceland. My apologies if I mispronounce the name of the town. And we have a handball. Is this outside the box? I think it is. And that sets up a good set piece opportunity for the Leopards. With five and change left to go in the first half as Hale Lombard was putting the pressure on. And that was outside the box. Griffin Roach, not sure if he was intending for his arm to go forward and smack that ball right there, but that was indeed the case. And a beautiful opportunity for the Leopards maybe to double up their lead heading into the half. Venezia and Gonsalves. Congregate around the ball, one of them likely to take this kick. Oh, they're kind of talking things over, maybe 
assessing the Boston wall 10 yards away. Gonsalves right footed, Venezia left footed. So it gives two different looks. Venezia takes it right into the wall. Second opportunity and the shot gets deflected. Corner kick coming up. So no actual shot there. Just defended balls. Gonsalves now will take the corner. Working from the far side, attacking right. It's better for the right foot. And Gonsalves takes the corner. Boston wins it with the head. Venezia looks to settle it. And we have a player down for the Terriers. And now finally an opportunity to get back into play. Stone with the kick. And a little bit of sportsmanship here. Dump off pass by Williams and Sutton will clear it ahead. So we're back into action. Almost right to the waiting run of Chris Gomez. But Gomez backtracks, wins possession. We play on and now a foul called against Boston. And Venezia will try to use that lefty foot to send it into the box. Already an assist today. It was on a corner to Adam Bramson. Gonsalves, our impact player, he'll come to help out. Gonsalves so far with a caution in his 41 minutes of play. He'll have both hands up, and he'll take the kick, send it in. Williams the nearest leopard, but the header won by Boston. Royalty comes to help out. Finds some space, gets around Corte, the cross, almost a back heel flick, but that's denied by Boston. Oh, well, there's a good idea by Griffin Roach to try to get the run going on a one two, but the second touch never came. Pressure on by Lombard. Stone gets the clear away. Echeverria, Hazel, and Al Gonsalves with touches. Echeverria at midfield. Lofts it ahead, Lombard will give chase, trying to keep it in with that 6-4 frame. Gives it a late lunge, but he got there late. Goal kick coming up as Boston will have another substitution. Boston substitution, number 28, Mark Aurora. In for number 32. Mark Aurora, freshman from Barcelona, comes on for Mana Shivali. Aurora with the team's lone assist this season. Got the equalizing helper to Matt McDonald in the 1-1 draw for Boston against Brown. Boston will need an equalizer to get back into this one. Lafayette leading 1-0, final two minutes of the first half. Lombard with a head, flicks it forward, had no help. And that'll be settled by Stone just outside the 18. Lombard. Heavy chest trap. Gets some help from Varela. And Boston can't keep it in on the far sideline. That's why you give the effort if you're Sebastian Varela. Don't make it easy to connect on passes. Pressure stays on. Final minute in this first half. Leopards turn it over. Boston maybe a chance to counter. Good job by Lafayette. They win it right back. Lombard with the touch towards Gonsalves. Lombard goes down in a heap and a foul called. Under 40 seconds when this free kick gets off. This might be the last chance of the half. And that might have been just... A bit reckless by Griffin Roach against his fellow freshman. Lombard only had the passing option. Gonsalves lofts it in on the free kick. Heading towards the near wing. Bramson applies pressure and wins the throw in. Ten seconds left to go. Echeverria, he's going to have to get a quick start. Running start, gets it in with five seconds into the box. Gonsalves turns, looks to fire, can't get the shot off. 
and that'll do it for the first half. But Lafayette has a lead regardless. Adam Brampson on a corner kick fed by Andrew Venezia, giving Lafayette the lead. They have held Boston without a shot in the first 45 minutes. We'll head off to break. You're watching the Lafayette Sports Network presented by the Patriot League Network on Stadium. It's Leopards 1, Terriers 0. Well, next week, homecoming this week, Alumni Day for Lafayette men's soccer. And they lead at the half against Boston 1-0. The score, Alex Sutton so far with a clean sheet. Trying to lead this team through the second half to their fifth shutout of the season. There was, I believe, five shutouts last year by Sutton and crew. So they're hoping to equal that total and maybe along the way as well equal their win total from last season. So in what was five, seven, and four as a keeper, Jack Cisneros and his lone start had a loss against Rutgers. So five, eight, and four last year for the Leopards, trying to make it a five, one, and one start. This four, one, four, one, and one start, their best since 2009 when they won 10 games, finished four and three in the Patriot League and was on their way to the Patriot League semis before falling short in that one. Already the team's 14th goal of the season. It was Adam Brampson with the tally. We're underway in the second half as Giannis Panayidis looks to stretch it out to James Gibson. Throw in will come up for Boston. Looks like the same as the starting 11 to begin the second half for the Leopards. The Terriers, they have to have at least one change. It doesn't look like Elias Lampus will come back in the game due to that heavy cut he took right above the eye late in that first half trying to defend a set piece where his teammate Matt McDonald had a head-to-head -head collision. Throwing coming up here for the Leopards. But can Boston find a way to get McDonald going? Our impact player for Boston was very quiet in the opening half just because they couldn't find the ball to number eight's feet. Throwing coming up again for the Terriers. Lafayette in the primary black. Boston in the primary white. The Leopards attacking from right to left in the second stanza here from Oak Stadium. Again, Adam Dubrovsky here. Thanking you so much for tuning in today on the Lafayette Sports Network. Sasanga tried to get that first touch. After winning it on the head, it deflects the other way after Boston's first touch. Sasenga dumps it off to Venezia. Some space with, instead sends it to Sasenga. Edge of the 18, chips it to the far post. Stays in, and the volley by Boston gets it out of trouble. Hazel heads it back towards the 18. Back and forth we go. Foul called against Giannis Panaitis as Mana Shivali got taken down. Well, we'll see how the pace changes in the second half. Boston, they're going to have to be a bit more active than they were in the first half. Really, though, their biggest struggle came from connecting on set pieces. That was the eighth foul they drew against Lafayette. They had a handful of them in the offensive half. Could not connect on any of them to at least put a shot towards Alex Sutton, and that's something they're going to have to do in the second half. Echeverria with the throw. And a lot of mustard behind it, as he usually does with his throws. Back and forth we go again. Hazel wins the ball. Quick pass by Echeverria. Gibson goes to the middle third. A bit dangerous here for the Leopards, but they work it through under pressure. To the left side, Venezia chips it up ahead. Sasenga tries to give chase. First touch is a header by Boston, but back to Venezia. Sasenga tries to get going. Strong tackle by Shavali, but Sasenga holds. Passes away. Panaitis. Oh, a dangerous pass. First touch is by Boston, and now trouble here in terms of communication, but eventually... Sutton picks it up and sends it away. Sasanga heavy on the first touch. It is 
scattered back and forth to start the second stanza. Header by Brampson. That was a deliberate pass. No, it was picked up by Sutton. No handball. Sutton faked the roll and boots it ahead. Almost four minutes complete in the second half. Good work up the middle between Gonsalves and Panayidis. Panayidis looked like he tried to chip it ahead and no one was making the run. Giannis Panayidis, the freshman from Cyprus. One goal, one assist. His assist came on the final tally to Sebastian Varela in a 5-2 win against Mammoth. He was again holding mid with Adam Bramson out. Has moved now more to the attacking mindset at central midfield. Tries to put on the pressure here. Backline passing by Boston. Sasenga as well. Almost got there in time. Didn't make a stab because he would have committed a foul. Header by Christian Williams. Kept in by Boston. Space up the middle. McDonald cuts. Dumps it off. Not yet deciding to test Alex Sutton. Sasanga giving chase. Won't get there in time. That ball won by Murray. And now the Leopards able to defend and turn it over. Panayidis up ahead. Making the run up the middle. Tries to find Kichamilidis through. Kichamilidis stops. Turns back. Tries to dump it off. And it's taken away right up the middle. And a chance to run for Boston. McDonald. Edge of the 18, tries to cut, gets it against the grain, and shanks it wide. Goal kick coming up. Well, that's the first shot for Boston, and not one that was even close to target. It was a good idea, and credit to Nick Hazel. He conceded a sliver of space immediately cut off the angle and forced that goal kick. Throw-in coming up for the Leopards. Off the goal kick. Hazel takes it away. Boston on the run gets it right back. I think both teams right now just a bit behind the eight ball offensively. Defensively they're reading pass as well. They're contesting ball as well. And they're occupying space well. And if it's a battle of struggling offenses, the game's going to be won by Lafayette as they obviously have the 1-0 lead. McDonald turns, rolls a pass in the middle. Shavali decides to fire a shot, and that one off the mark. So definitely more of an idea to shoot, perhaps... Neil Roberts took one peek at the stat sheet and said, well, that zero needs to change. But both shots well off target outside the 18. If you're Lafayette, you'll settle for allowing shots like that all day. Seven minutes complete second half. Good volley by Gonsalves. Leopard zigzagging to build it up. Sasanga rolls a pass. Kichimilidis from behind. And again, just a bit slow right now for the two offenses. This has been a Lafayette side throughout much of the year that has been quick, deliberate, and effective passing the ball. But sometimes those opening minutes out of the half can be sluggish, and that's the case for both teams today in the second half. Andrew Venezia will have the throw-in. Junior from Lincroft, New Jersey, already an assist, his third of the season. Venezia now with nine career assists as a leopard. Valuable left foot for Lafayette. Panayidis misconnected on the pass, throw-in for Boston. The Lafayette fans trying to Get the Pards energy back on the pitch. 
And for Boston, they have to uh, just roll to have the throw in. Owen Murray will take it. Murray running start. Header flicked back by Boston. Some volleys exchanged back and forth. Boston wins possession. Corte will stretch it to the wing for Carey Peterson, and that's off the mark, out of bounds. It's been some unforced turnovers for Boston, trying to get passes either across or out wide. And that also has limited their opportunities. They've had all of two shots well off target so far in this second half. Will Echeverria with the throw-in up towards Sasanga. Boston first touch tries to keep it in and goes back to Lafayette. Gonsalves crosses it as Venezia comes up. And that's pickpocketed away. Couldn't get that first touch as Murray wins the ball. Now looks to send it and Williams right there. Venezia taken from behind. A hard tumble for Andrew Venezia. Sets up a free kick. And a caution will come as well to Toti Knutsen, the Icelandic junior, with the swipe right there. Takes Venezia down hard. Venezia and Gonsalves, like they've had on the past few set pieces, will congregate around the ball, give a few different options. Again, Gonsalves, the best on set pieces with the right foot. Venezia, the best with set pieces with the left foot. On the card, Boston. And Tony Knudsen will head off for now as Zion Balgan will head on. Lafayette, and what is now the 55th minute of the match, trying to go ahead by a pair. Venezia already with an assist on the set piece. And before we get back underway, a bit of a discussion as I think Will Echeverria, he's got some fire and passion. Might have been unhappy with how the players were hand checking inside the 18. The official gives a talk with him after a bit of protest. Even saw Martin Sasanga try to calm down at Chavaria. But it will be Andrew Venezia all by himself who will take the set piece. Sends it low. The shot by Gibson goes high. And that was a good idea. Try to send it up the middle and short with a teammate in mind to get there first. But the shot off the mark, and it's still a 1-0 Lafayette lead. Gibson, as a junior last year, had four goals early in the season, but then unfortunately had a deal with injury. And that ended Gibson's goal scoring tally. He came back late in the season, didn't get another, but he has one goal this season. It was a goal against Mama to make the game 1 1 at the time as Gibson comes to help out Gonzalez here. Looking for a cross. Cuts back at the end line. Some space to dribble. Couldn't get the pass off as the second Terrier takes it away. First pass, though, goes right back to Lafayette. And another foul called. Well, if you're Boston, you're not going to get the offense going if you can't get that first pass after the turnover connected. They've struggled to here to do it. And Echeverria draws the foul. Venezia again will take the free kick. Lafayette will have seven in the vicinity of the 18 in support. Stone, trouble to clear. Panayidis can't get a chance. Flag goes up. 
I think the determination there was Stone had his spot and should have been given the opportunity to make the catch. Pass is short. Sasenga applies pressure. First pass this time a good one. The second one quickly turned over. Ball gets through. Panayitis gave it a stab. Still wins the ball on the 18. Cross gets denied as Pan or Kitcher Miletus, I should say, was falling away on the cross. Now an opportunity. Panayitis on the head. Just wide. Diving effort by Stone. Not sure if he would have got to it in time, but Giannis Panayitis nearly made it 2 nothing. That was James Gibson on the help to cross it, and there was wide open space for Panaitis. Gave all that he could to head it and try to find the near post. And Lafayette, they stay in control in terms of the scoring volume or the shooting volume. Both are accurate right now, obviously. And Lafayette leading 1-0. Turnover, though, at midfield by Panaitis. Given right back. Again, that first and second pass after a turnover has been an issue for Boston, besides the set pieces. Lafayette this season, they have dictated a lot of the shooting tempo. Boston, they have not had that type of success. They have been outshot in five of their first six games. The one time they had a shot advantage, a loss against Mary Mack, 3-0, by the way. And Mary Mack, a first-year program as a Division I side, they coming over from Division II, actually had more shots on goal. The cross by Venezia, headed away by Boston. Hazel gets to the spot first, sends it back to Gibson. Gibson with the cross into the box. Another volley away by Boston. This time Griffin Roach to defend. Sent back again inside the 18. It is Hazel looking for the shot, and he gets a deflection. No shot. Corner coming up. Nick Hazel, who's the holding center mid, yet to have a shot this season. Yet to have a point. But he was a very... Well-versed player attacking at Florence Township High, the product of Roebling, New Jersey. Had a school record at 98 goals at the high school level and played his club ball at Patriot FC. So he knows what he can do in situations like that. Ryan Gonsalves with the corner. Boston wins it with a head, and that will not be kept in. Another corner coming up. Dennis Bond still coaching the team up on these set pieces. Yelled out one bit to change. Adam Brampson did just exactly what coach asked for earlier in the game, running to a spot and winning on a header. This time to the weak post. Lafayette heads it back towards the middle. Venezia tries to cross, denied by Boston, and a foul called as Sasenga takes a push in the back from Mana Shavali. An hour in, and the Leopards keeping the pressure on, trying to double the lead. But yeah, if you look game by game in terms of shot comparison, the Leopards, they have controlled all but one game, and that was the loss against Temple. Now, the game against St. Francis Brooklyn, they had a six-shot advantage when Andrew Venezia was sent off late in the 39th minute. They still actually finished with a shot advantage 15-13 to and the shot on goal advantage 6-5 to against the Terriers in a scoreless draw. Gonsalves to the far side, a header redirected wide by Marcos Kitramilidis. Goal kick coming up. Lafayette and the Leopards will have two players Dylan on. Royalty number 10, Dylan Royalty and heads on for Martin Sasenga. And Sebastian Varela heads on for Giannis Panayidis as we look at the replay. Great design. Just couldn't get the header directed towards the target. Foul called this time against Lafayette. We have an update as 
You perhaps just briefly saw there in the backdrop the field hockey pitch. The Leopards get a Molly McAndrew goal in the second quarter. And Lafayette leading Holy Cross 1-0 second quarter. Again, a celebration today for the 1999 Field Hockey Patriot League Championship team. And a good way to start off that game ahead against the Crusaders at home. Gibson tried to work through traffic and that's taken away by Boston. Still scuffling between these two sides to find true offensive opportunities, although the Leopards built some pressure over about a five to 10 minute span in the second half. All said, midfield, that range near the 50, both sides struggling to connect on passes. Ball misread by James Gibson on the head. Foul, no. Throw it for Lafayette. Still no shots for Matt McDonald, who has 15 career goals, including a pair of penalty kick tallies. The only shot credited to Boston, Mana Shivali. And so, goal kick coming up here for Boston, and still the offense is struggling to get things going in the second half. Again, at the end of the day, that benefits Lafayette, but they want to find more pressure. And the live flow of pay, the pressure in the second half has exclusively been via set piece. They would love to go up by two against Boston, try to get their first win since 2013 against the Terriers. And the Leopards will have another substitution coming up. Chris Gomez to come on for James Gibson, who was... Holding a bit more back at midfield to start off the second half. But Gomez provides a nice option along the wing. Left side for the Leopards. Gomez, who initially was recruited by Syracuse and was the 18th ranked recruit according to College Soccer News and 42nd according to Top Drawer Soccer. Is now his third season with the Leopards. Six career goals, two career assists. Three of his six goals coming via penalty. Pressure on from Keitra Miladis forces a throw in, and both teams will have substitutions coming in. Looks like Keitra Miladis will head off. Hale Lombard. Back up top for him. And, number nine, Jacopo number 16, and a pair for and Boston. Lombard. In for number nine, Looks like Jacopo Ambrosetti heads on for Jorge Lopez Lacu. And Carrie Peterson on for Owen Murray. So maybe a little bit more offensive minded for the Terriers trying to kickstart their unit that has just one shot off target so far. Lafayette though will have a throw in and it'll be Will Echeverria with the long throw. You see there right in that left side, number 21, Chris Moyes. He was the previous Leopard with long throw ability before this. He's now a Lafayette alum and many of the Pards alums cheering on Echeverria on the throw into the box. Off of Boston head, clear a little bit of trouble, headed back forward towards Lombard. Lombard trying to win it, same with Brampson. Now a chance for Christian Williams and an outstretched save for Boston. Michael Stone keeps it one nothing. As the captain nearly had his second tally of the season and third of his career. Christian Williams began his career at Florida Atlantic. Scored in his last game with the Owls. Scored earlier this season the lone tally on a set piece against Fairleigh Dickinson to win one nothing. It was assisted by Andrew Venezia who has the assist here. But Boston into the box. Williams denies it here. 
Two-year captain, both as a center back for Lafayette. Christian Williams. Varela, good work. Lombard with the nutmeg. Help comes from Chevalier, though, and while maybe a bit of egg on the face of Florian Reeder, that ended up being no harm. Balligan can't get the run started. Throw in for Lafayette. Almost at the midway point of the second stanza, still a 1-0 Lafayette lead. And another foul, a stern whistle as well. Maybe a bit of a auditory warning to the Terriers, try to keep things calm here in terms of the fouls. But Angie Venezia will have the free kick for Lafayette. Both hands up, Venezia. A lot of air underneath it towards the weak post. Lombard can't direct the head towards the target, but Gonsalves comes to help out, gets around his defender in the box, gets tripped up, and here comes a corner opportunity. So Ryan Gonsalves, our impact player, if he doesn't get credit for an assist, if this ball is converted by someone else, really he should. And Mana Shavali, maybe a little bit of a jersey tug. Gonsalves notes it, helps himself down. And Chris Gomez, three of three in his career from the penalty mark. Looks like he'll be taking it. Senior from Jamison, Pennsylvania. As a sophomore, converted at Rutgers. And then last year, 1-0 win against Monmouth, converted on the road as a junior. And again last year, 1-0 win at home against Lehigh. Michael Stone trying to keep things alive. All twos on the board as number two will try to make it 2 nothing in the second half. Gomez scoring up perhaps with the lefty foot. And here's a chance to strike. Gomez finishes wide. Well, everything set up for it. You had all twos on the board on the clock. It was the second half. Number two was striking. But the number two on the Lafayette side of the scoreboard eludes Chris Gomez. Wide for the first time in four opportunities via penalty, and that's something we'll keep an eye on. So 58th minute this game is far from over, and maybe... That might be the momentum swing Boston is looking for. And we have another stern whistle, a stop of the clock. I think we might have a substitution along the way as there's a Lafayette player who needed to be taken off Dylan Royalty. So that was what the whistle was for. Martin Sasenga will head back on. So again, Adam Bramson with the tally for Lafayette. That coming in the 34th minute officially at 33.53. Bramson from Venetia. And then you have the PK miss by Chris Gomez coming at 67-38. Gomez nearly had a chance for the cross, but that's won by Boston. Gomez comes back, wins possession. Hazel, under pressure, dumps it off. And looks like that will be played for a goal kick. Boston will have a substitution in wait, I think, at the next opportunity, not this one.
Off it with eight shots in this game, just one from Boston. And now up ahead, almost a beauty from Sasenga intended for Lombard, but a sliding save by Florian Reeder. And he's able to eventually work it out of bounds. Throwing coming up, Ekaveria will have the long throw. Now Echeveria trying to make it 2 nothing here. On the long throw, lines it in. And a foul called against Hale Lombard. We have another update. This one out of town as Lafayette Volleyball. They are rolling eight wins in a row. Taking down St. Francis Brooklyn. And I believe that tournament being held at Hartford but what a start to the season for the Leopards they're going to be having Patriot League play coming up next week but now eight number wins four, in a row Dennis for the Leopards Lewis. and for number 17, Ryan I think they might number have 16, one more coming up Lopez -Laku in for number 32, before they get Monica into Kamali action in for Boston University. and Patriot League play but here we have throwing coming up for the Leopards Venezia throw is one by Boston Back and forth we go, and now Boston trying to push it up the middle. A turn by McDonald, sliding away. Brampson tries to win it, Sutton as well. And just enough there for the Leopards to deny a shot opportunity. Good work by Adam Brampson and Alex Sutton. And now we're going to have a caution, I think, to Boston for... I'm not sure if it was something towards the range on Sportsmanlike, towards Alex Sutton, but the frustration mounting for Boston as Amber Setti gets carded with the yellow. Well, that's a freshman mistake. No need to get a car in that type of situation. So Alex Sutton now will just take the kick. But yeah, so it's now eight wins in a row, a 9-5 and five record for Lafayette Volleyball, and they do have one more game coming up in Hartford. That is against Maryland Eastern Shore, who they defeated earlier this year in four sets at the Crosstown Invitational. So they will try to make it 10-5 and five before heading into what is actually one more non-league match before the opener Tuesday against St. Peter's. 7 p.m. on the Lafayette Sports Network, then Friday against Lehigh in that rivalry game. Great start for first-year head coach Ryan Adams and his squad. Gomez, good volley around a defender. Works it towards the corner for Venezia. Venezia's cross into the box. First touch, though, from a terrier. Good work to win it back. Varela keeps the pressure on. Sebastian Varela with the cross. Lombard looks for the bike kick, and that never headed towards target. Why not? If you're in the opportunity, try it out. But Boston now making things a bit serious on the counter. Shot from distance, and that's off the mark. Might have been a cross. And a goal kick coming up with less than 20 to go in the game. Alex Sutton has yet to make a save. Both shots he's faced have been off target. That a shot wide by John Syracuse. Giannis Panayidis initially won the ball, but taken back by Boston. Panayidis with a stab and a takeaway. Hazel dumps it off on the first touch. Echeveria sends it ahead. 
Lombard giving chase. Puts the pressure on. Boston has to keep it in and play it. And the clear past midfield. Brampson makes sure it's seen out of bounds. Throw in for the Leopards where they'll have two substitutions. Boston will have one. Balligan heads off for Boston. I believe that will be Toti Knutson back on. And I think James Gibson back on for Chris Gomez. And Ryan Gonzalez is back on for Sebastian Varela. One more field hockey update. It's at the half. Lafayette won Holy Cross nil. And I think they just got done celebrating the 1999 field hockey Patriot League champion Lafayette side. Venezia with a misplaced header leads to a Boston throw in the Terriers heading into the final quarter hour down a goal. Mark Rora with the throw in. Gets it back. Cuts by Gibson. Some space. Rolls a pass. Still to the waiting feet of a terrier. Chip back towards Rora. And no shot near the goal. And that sequence. Lafayette with another substitution. Hale Lombard heads off. Kitcher Militus heads back on. Keecher Miladis and Gibson co-leading the Leopards with two shots apiece out of the eight in total. Keecher Miladis one shot on target, Gibson without any. Gibson tries to roll a pass that well off the mark of the intended Martin Sasanga. Boston with the clear, but Hazel heads it back forward. Volleys exchanged. Back to the offensive half for Boston. A quick dump off, heavy on the trap. Gibson plays it. Venezia helps out, but through two tacklers is Griffin Roach. Stretched out to the far wing. Boston looking for the equalizer. Miles to Keiko. Rolls the pass. Sasenga trying to get there first. The cross comes from Boston, and they set up their first corner of the game. Really their best opportunity so far. Lafayette grabbing the lead on a corner. Boston with an opportunity here. And Kerry Peterson, the sophomore from Iceland, will take it. A lefty boot sent to the far post and way high. I mean, Boston, they just have not been good on the set pieces. Readers cross, easily met by a Lafayette head. Third wave for Boston. Edge of the 18, won by Gibson. Panayidis sends it up ahead, and Marcos Kichamildis in a foot race. First touch is a good one, defended by Griffin Roach. Kichamildis with the cross. Here comes James Gibson, and that one is saved. Michael Stone again, helping to keep the game alive. A penalty kick miss, and then that counter opportunity stuffed by Stone, keeping it 1-0. Faint hopes yet alive for Boston who shoots from a distance and it gets off the hands and in. Are you kidding me? We're tied at one. What a stunner. Scoring for Boston University, number 11, Carrie Peterson. Carrie Peterson had a lot of pepper behind the shot, but that is one that Alex Sutton should have had, especially with how the sequence went the other way. And now if you're the Leopards, they just have to regroup. You just have to find a way to regroup, especially if you're Alex Sutton. First shot on target, and that one just squirted through the hands of the sophomore keeper. 13.08 left to go. Well, still plenty of time for the Leopards to rewrite the story back in their favor. Carrie Peterson's first goal of the season. Gibson giving chase won't get there in time. 
Started the run a bit late. That's the fourth career goal for the sophomore. Kerry Peterson had all three of his goals as a freshman. In fact, had five assists en route to all Patriot League second team last year. Had a multi-assist game against Bucknell along with the three goals. So we are suddenly even. And a foul committed by Andrew Venezia. The Leopards can't be caught flat-footed here. Peterson will take the free kick. Set the ball in the proper spot under 12 minutes left to go. Sutton comes all the way out into traffic. A little bit of trouble here, and this time he picks it up. Quickly trying to atone by taking command. Such a tough spot for a keeper when you make a mistake like that because you really do feel the weight of the world on your shoulders when it happens. If you're a field player and you make one mistake, oftentimes it's harmless. Not for a keeper, as James Gibson took a hard foul. Set piece opportunity coming up for the Leopards. Angie Venezia charged with the task of the set piece. Ten and change left to go. Angie Venezia on the kick, sends it towards the far post. Boston had a scramble with the header first touch. Gonsalves has it muscled away. And here we go again with Boston trying to counter. It was a shot right at Alex Sutton that led to a goal. And now Gonsalves gets called for the foul trying to go the other way. Quick restart off the foul for Boston. And the Leopards quickly defend. Second wave for Boston. Met by Rutford resistance and booted ahead by Hazel. Nobody making the run. Got to find a way to get that offensive juice back going if you're Lafayette under 10 to go in regulation. You're still tied if you're Lafayette. Still plenty of time to get the win. And in a Patriot League game, this matters so much. A draw versus a win, a two-point difference. And the Leopards were close in their fair share of games last year, but could only muster one win and had three draws in league play. Update on Lafayette Field Hockey. Another goal in the... Now third quarter makes it 2 nothing. Pards ahead of the Crusaders. But in this one, we now suddenly have a tie game on the Kerry Peterson blast that went right through the hands of Alex Sutton to tie it up at one. Lafayette with the first two touches off the throw-in, but Satchel Corte has it back. Cut back for Boston. And that was the pass rolled into the 18. Off the mark, goal kick. And the Leopards will have another substitution. Sebastian Varela heads back on for Giannis Panayidis. A 9-3 Lafayette shot advantage. They had a penalty kick miss with an opportunity to go up 2-0. Had a cross that was point blank denied by Michael Stone. That prevented it from 2-0. And on the very counter of that sequence, Boston had the game tying goal. It really is, for the Leopards, this feeling of like, we've let this outcome slip through our grasp, but they still have plenty of time. Under eight minutes to go in regulation. And if it necessary, it goes to two 10-minute overtime, period, overtime periods. 
Gonzalez, not a good pass to Gibson, but Gibson will still get turning and forward. Past midfield. Gets around a clipping defender. Sasanga receives the pass. Now working the right wing in the second half. Back to Gibson. Gibson, edge of the 18. Cross gets deflected. Sasanga tries to head it towards Panaitis or make that Kichamilidis. Hazel's volley goes backwards. Really is right now for the Leopards a struggle to get that momentum back. The match is not defined in one moment. But what that one moment has done is taken away the momentum for the Leopards and has maybe even taken out a lot of the energy. Miles to Keiko will have the long throw. As Boston now trying to get the lead. Had her pop near the middle. Williams denies it. Corte with a cross, and that's off the mark. Lafayette will have another substitution. Dylan Royalty is back on. James Gibson will head off. Six minutes left to go. Gibson not yet off the field, so the Leopards will have to wait, and now they are good to get back into action. You can sense the frustration for the Leopards, but again, this is an even scored game. Still plenty of time to get going. And Sasenga with the takeaway. Royalty on the turn, races forward, pushing that right wing. Gets the cross, just out the stretch of Kitramilidis. Sasenga gets to the spot. Venezia sends it to the far post, and the shot is skied high. Stone couldn't get to it. It was waiting at the far post. Dylan Royalty, though, couldn't get to the spot in time, and it's a goal kick. That might be what gets the energy back for the Leopards. That was too far ahead of Sebastian Varela as well. Final five minutes of regulation. Michael Stone, four saves. He had a point-blank save on a cross. Keep this a one nothing game. He didn't have to face a shot on target on the penalty kick miss by Chris Gomez. But those two moments... Kept this within striking distance, and what was an unfortunate gift in the favor of Boston has equaled the score. Anyone's game right now. Sasenga gets it started at midfield. Just trying to utilize his pace. Cuts in. Gets around a defender. Rolls a pass to Kitramilidis. Kitramilidis tries to chip it in. Denied by the Terriers. And back the other way. A lot of numbers committed for the Leopards. Flat-footed McDonald didn't have a chance on the send. And now a throw-in coming up for the Leopards. Varela. Quick passing by Panaitis, a 1-2. Panaitis fires from distance, and that's in! Giannis Panaitis with 3.37 left to go. And how about this? For the Leopards, a goal to make it 2-1. And there, the crowd cheers. The goal celebration here for Lafayette on what could be the game winner with 3.33 left to go. If we were to be 100% Frank, an atonement here in the press box for the goal music not going off the first time when Lafayette scored. And then you had that crazy turn of events.
where Boston had tied it. And it's the freshman who gets the energy back into the crowd. The product of Cypress with his second career goal. And I, was it him who lost the shoe before the shot? The shin guard that actually went off. That is stunning. But for Lafayette, right back now in position to get the three points. At the backdrop, perhaps you heard before the goal scored by Lafayette, you might have heard some brief music in the backdrop. That was Molly McAndrew getting involved for the second time in the game for Lafayette Field Hockey. They lead 3-0 against Holy Cross. It's now a little bit of a tense moment, but that time Sutton easily picks it up on the cross. And all of a sudden, a chance here maybe to put it away. Sasanga tries it and pops it high. Oh, Lafayette had another opportunity to strike in the final three minutes. The Leopards with goals number 14 and 15 on the season. And they have been able to turn around what could have been a really Rough turn of events. Boston had a huge sequence go in their favor. Took all the energy out of the Lepers before Giannis Panaitis from distance buried a shot. Boston had nothing there on the cross. Sutton chest trap and now we'll pick it up with two left to go. Is this now enough for Lafayette? Adversity struck, but they responded, and that might be the biggest difference from recent seasons to this year. How the Leopards respond to adversity and what might have been draws or losses in recent seasons might still be a win here today. About 100 seconds left to go for Boston after the free kick. Boston building it up to the near side. Jorge Lopez Lacu met by Andrew Benizia. A grab of the jersey, and that's a foul against Boston. Lacu, the freshman from Madrid, gets whistled for the foul. And we're in the final minute of action. The Leopards will take all the time they can get. And as Lacu continues to discuss things with the official, the one negative thing there is you now have the official not focused on how much time the Leopards are taking off the clock. But the Leopards still in timely fashion get the free kick off. Header goes out of bounds by Boston. Lafayette will have a substitution. Clock will stop with 42 seconds Lafayette left to go. Substitution number 27, Hale Lombard. Hale Lombard, Lombard will come on for Giannis, for Giannis Panaitis, who gets a... Stern, round of applause after the go-ahead goal with less than four minutes to go. Sasanga shifting back on the direction of Dennis Bonas. as it was towards Hale Lombard. That 6-4 frame advantageous to shield defenders in this final minute. But Boston... Gets the pass through the back line. And Satchel Corte sends it up ahead. Final minute. McDonald with the header. A chance to equalize. And that shot goes wide. Oh, it was a beautiful opportunity for Mark Rora. And an anticlimactic finish for the Terriers. Uh, it was honestly their best shot opportunity of the game. Even better than the goal. 
that Peterson had, but the Pards nonetheless roll to two, victory 2-1 to one on University a winner one. by Giannis Panayidis. A little smooch from Our Alex Sutton to one of his field players to celebrate the victory. It's an exciting 2-1 to one victory for Lafayette over Boston University to start out Patriot League play. Adam Dobrovsky here with head coach Dennis Bond will be joined by our player of the game momentarily and Giannis Panayidis. But coach, obviously in this game, you get the lead in the first half. Unfortunate sequence of events ties it up at one, but the team bounces back. Just talk about the team's resiliency to get that win. Yeah, I mean, I just think it shows our character. I mean, missing a PK, giving up a, an awful goal um, could be very demoralizing. And very easily on a hot day like today, uh, with the stress and pressure, and mentally and physically, a lot of teams would just collapse. And uh, this team showed great resolve, great heart, and uh, again, great character, uh, and found a way to win. Well, sometimes it just takes the moment of a freshman who might just be soaking in the moment and not focused on all the other things going on. And Yanni comes through with a big goal to have we've talked about the various different options he was playing a lot at holding central mid with Adam Brampson out he moves more up top it was of late that strike obviously so big but to have that come from a freshman how does that feel as a coach yeah I mean Giannis is a great player he's really versatile and will do whatever I ask him to do and so we moved him further up the field we know he has the ability to make plays and in, uh, in the attacking third and uh, his shot today showed the skill and talent that he has uh, as an attacking option as well so just couldn't be prouder of him Congrats on the win, Coach. Thanks. And now here with our player of the game, Giannis Panayidis. And Giannis, in that type of moment, it's a huge moment. Were you thinking anything, or are you just deciding to just fire and see what happens? Um, okay, I understood that we had very few time to score, so I just find myself in front of the goal and I shot. What does the fear, the, just the pure excitement feel like when you get that goal? <sighs> it's unbelievable feeling. It's exciting. I went with the alumni and I celebrate. It's, for, it's a day for them, it's a day for us, it's a good day today. Now, obviously, as a freshman, you have a lot to get acclimated to, obviously coming from Cyprus here to the States, a great academic program. So you have a lot on your plate. How has it been so far to have excitement and five wins so far for the team? It's excellent. I want to mention my teammates, they, were, they became my brothers, my family here. I'm so, I'm so proud of them. I'm so lucky I have them, and I wish them all the best. What's your key to rest and recovery for the upcoming games? Sleep. Sleep. Sleep a lot. Always, always good. Congratulations on the win, Yanis. Thank you very much.